Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Venom Vlog. And today we are going to check out this article on Bleeding Cool. Um, this is a website that I've actually in the past have written a couple things for. Uh, Rich Johnston was nice enough to, you know, give me a voice on there, which was really nice of him. And I'll always, you know, be thankful for that. Uh, but this Jude Terror guy, ever since he kind of came on the website, I've kind of lost interest in it. Uh, and nothing really against him. I don't even know who he is personally. I think he did like another website at one point called Outhousers, which also, you know, gave us some good press when I worked in comics, so I'm very appreciative of his stuff as well. But overall, like this site, it's just a little too gossipy for me at times. And uh, and that's pretty much the only reason I, I haven't been on it that much. Uh, but I know there's, I, I said it at the beginning, like bleeding cool, because I know there's a lot of people out there that just hate this website. Um, I don't hate this website at all. Uh, I think most things have a purpose. And I even feel like this website a lot of times has a purpose. And they're very outspoken about things in the industry, like, uh, you know, people who are like sexual harassers and stuff like that. And so I applaud them for that. And they'll speak up when other sites won't speak up. So, um, you know, I got to give them some credit there, you know. So anyway, I, I have um, a mostly love relationship for this website, but I just haven't been on it in a long time. And I kind of lost track of it and uh, and kind of don't go here that much anymore. But this was the only site that was covering this at least. Um, but again, like Bleeding Cool, typically uh, they got the information wrong. Uh, the first death of Absolute Carnage in Web of Venom Funeral Pyre, number one, first look. Um, this is not the first death in Absolute Carnage so far. If you're counting the Web of Venom books, uh, all of those Web of Venom books had deaths in them. And even the Cult of Carnage one killed like an entire town of people. So I would say if you're going to go off the first deaths that are, you know, Carnage related in the Absolute Carnage books, but you're counting Web of Venom, uh, you've already missed your opportunity there. So this is already like a, a you know, a bad headline for this book. Uh, and also it's not even, it's just a clickbait title uh, because the person who dies is a nobody. So it's even worthless there. Uh, but before we dive into this, I want to say that throughout this episode, you're going to see codes, digital codes pop up. And those are courtesy of our friend Lonely Symbiote. Um, she's a big supporter of this channel and supporter of my gaming channel and, and Twitter and Instagram. And I'm going to put a link to her Instagram and Twitter down below. Make sure you follow her. All the codes that are going to pop up in this episode are from her, from, you know, copies of the books that she got. And she was nice enough to give us those codes. So I'm going to put like three or four of those codes in this episode. So enjoy. And if you want to say thank you, thank her personally down in the comments below. I'm sure she'll see them and she'll comment back. All right. With that out of the way, let's dive into this first death of Absolute Carnage, which obviously we just debunked it's not the first death in absolute carnage uh, but absolute carnage here is not only a super mega crossover event which requires shocking character deaths to show people how serious it is but it's also stars carnage uh, and of course ads are going to pop up all over the place so i apologize for that it also stars carnage so you know the deaths are going to be ramped up to extreme levels regardless of false promises recently made by marvel editor-in-chief cb skobolsky so yeah uh, they always do that bleeding cool always links to past articles they've written about stuff um cb skobolsky i guess said like a month or two ago that they're going to stop like needlessly killing people in marvel comics and i think he means main characters like obviously there's always context to things um i'm thinking he's meaning main characters like you know they're not going to kill captain america and make an event out of that and then bring them back in a few years or wolverine or something like that but i feel like a lot of like d-list characters and stuff they're up for grabs they always are <laughs> that's that's the nature of comics they're always up for grabs um so, uh, yeah, so anyway, the uh, Funeral Pyre number one uh, called by Colin Bunn, um, who, um, you know, after the Venom issues 13, 14, and 15 from War of the Realms, he really got back on the mark for me as far as writing Venom stuff. And I always assumed, like a lot of other people did, that he wasn't a big fan of Eddie Brock. But boy, did he write the crap out of Eddie Brock in those three issues. And he gave Eddie Brock some real heroic moments that made me really love uh, those three issues. And those, to me, are the, my favorite three issues out of all the War of the Realm stuff. The Jason Aaron six issues were good, but I thought those three Venom issues were great. And I know I'm a Venom show and you're like, oh, there's a bias there. Um, I like the Thor stuff too. I like it just fine. But uh, those those three issues are, I think, had spirit in them and, and actual character growth. And I think those are the things that are really missing from Donny Cates' run. And you guys can disagree with me till you're blue in the face. That's fine. You can have your opinion. I can have mine. That's the point of this show is that we share our opinions in the comments below. So if you disagree with me, fine. Let me know down there. Um, you know, but for me... Those, those issues, they, they reveal a lot of the lore of things like, all right, we're going to peel back the lore of the symbiotes. Uh, that's what Donnie Cates is doing. And then we're going to peel back that Eddie Brock's life. You don't actually know his life. He has a son. He has all these other things. So they're, we're going to put twists in there, but they're not really developing the character. They're just peeling layers back, but I don't feel like there's any real growth, uh, at least so far with Eddie. Maybe now that he realizes Dylan's his son, maybe we can finally start getting that. But it took Donnie Cates 12 issues of setup to get him to the point where he's at now. 
And Colin Bunn comes in and just takes that and just develops Eddie Brock in big ways in these three issues that were uh, part of <laughs> War of the Realms. So I don't know. To me, that was Colin Bunn coming in going like, I'm, I'm firing on all cylinders. So I hope, because he's the co-creator of Andy, and that's who this Funeral Pyre book is going to star, uh, I hope he's going to really bring it home with this book too, because it's his you know it's his character he co-created. Um, so anyway, it says here, so who bites the first bullet? Yeah, some random hipster, they call him, but uh, he looks more like a, a just like a douche. Uh, he actually looks like that um, Maximilian dude guy, that YouTuber guy, and that guy seems nice, and I'm not trying to call him a douche, but just like his his look, they, they looks like they mirrored his look off of, uh, of Maximilian. Um, but, uh, let's say Carnage ramps up his hunt in Venom, uh, Funeral Pyre, uh, which comes out in July, I believe. So that's going to be the last Web of Venom book, I think, uh, before the big Absolute Carnage series. So yeah, you, hopefully you've been collecting all those Web of Venom things. They've been apparently setting up stuff that's going to maybe pay off. I don't know. We'll see. Um, New York, New York, uh, tw June 28th, 2019. Cletus Cassidy is kicking off his murder spree before Absolute Carnage arrives this August and the Trail of Bodies first pile up in July's Web of Venom. So even Marvel gets it wrong. Like, there's a, a whole town in Cult of Carnage. An entire town was killed uh, by Carnage and his followers. So there's already been a death count. Uh, and then, uh, what's his name? John Jameson is like a sleeper agent. So, you know, he's going to probably turn on everybody at some point. So this is just ridiculous. Like, you guys not even know before you write these press releases, what just happened, like, you know, a couple months ago. Um, it's, it's so ridiculous. There's a whole town dead. And, uh, and they're sitting there going, no, the first body, finally. It's like some guy at a record store dies. And they're like, this is the first death. It's like, uh, no, he's not the first death. Uh, so, so sorry to burst your bubble there. Uh, for weeks, serial killer Carnage has been hunting former symbiotes, hosts, and killing them. Um, I don't think we've seen that yet uh, either. Next in the crosshairs of his inky tendrils is Andy Benton, formerly Mania, who's back to living in Philadelphia and without any symbiote to save her. Uh, maybe Carnage. I know he's been hunting. Yeah, oh, that's right. He killed Lee Price and stuff. But that was in like the that was in the free comic book day issue, which I'm not even sure in continuity that takes place before now, because that means Carnage goes to New York, which is where apparently Absolute Carnage and most of that event is going to take place or the, start that event anyway. So he, apparently he if you're reading this if the release is the continuity order, which I don't believe it is, um, because some of those post-credit scenes I also don't believe are in current continuity. Some of them might be, but I feel like most of them aren't, especially the one where that guy gets off the bus and sees, like, black costume Spider-Man. It's like, yeah, that's not current day. Um, anyway, so, yeah, he killed Lee Price, a Carnage dressed as Eddie Brock for no reason at all, um, I guess, other than to, like, you know, get people looking for Eddie Brock or to get Eddie Brock coming out of hiding or something, but yet Carnage can detect where all former symbiotes are and he can go right to them but yet he he can't detect eddie brock i don't know what's going on there um maybe the suit when it separated from eddie it took every trace of it with him with it maybe i, I don't know it could be so anyway that aside i'm sure the story will explain it but uh you know he killed lee price and and that happened in new york but now he's going to philadelphia to fight mania so i'm i'm assuming he's Coming from, what was it, Colorado or wherever that town was where he killed everybody, then Cult of Carnage. I'm assuming he's just beelining to New York. So I would imagine this takes place before the free comic book day issue, uh, before Lee Price gets killed. So so who has Carnage been hunting down for weeks, if that were the case? I don't know. <laughs> who knows? Who, ca who cares about, you know, linear storytelling and, and continuity? It's, it's, you're just, you're overthinking this, Seek. Uh, when I took this project, I warned editorial that it was going to be vicious and bloody and cruel, said writer and mania co-creator Colin Bunn. I'm leaning into Carnage's horror vibe here. This is absolutely a horror story with Andy as the hero and Carnage as the unstoppable killer. Um, that sounds awesome. With terror and throat gripping action, this utterly alien uh, threat or thriller will mark only the beginning of Carnage's insatiable bloodlust. Uh, for more information, go to marvel.com. Um, but yeah, we have the pages down here. Alberto Jimenez Albuquerque and Joshua Casara are the two artists. Um, and I actually like both their works. Declan Chalvey does the cover, which is great, because that was the artist, I think, on Colin Bunn's Venom Run. So you've seen this cover before. I think we've shown it on one of the previous episodes. Um, but yeah, there's Mania there. Andy Benton, uh, definitely a fan favorite. And she's got the hell marker on her chest there. So uh, yeah, she doesn't have a symbiote to protect her, but she's definitely like got like Damien Hellstrom powers or something. Uh, maybe not that intense, but anyway, you see, so you don't see the dialogue here, but you see her kind of like hanging out with these... Wow, I guess they are hipsters. <laughs> I guess that is an accurate description. Like that guy's got the big, you know, beanie on and uh, whatever. Okay, and uh, yep, cool. And then so she's walking by a window, remembering her time as, you know, a mania, I guess. 
And remember, Mania is the clone symbiote. It's the one from the Daniel Way run that we talked about, um, you know, like a couple months ago. That I I actually love that run. Uh, I think it ended pretty poorly, but I thought the setup for it was really great. And it was great to see Cullen Bunn and these and these writers and artists take that thread and pick up on it and and bring Andy into the fold and make her you know give her the clone suit, um, which wasn't you know bonding well or staying well with Venom at the time. So yeah, and we're gonna get into all the. Flash Thompson stuff this fall. That's going to be my big push. I'm trying to get through the last Eddie Brock stuff between now and like, uh, you know, early September. And then from September on, like end of September onward, we're going to talk about Flash Thompson all the way till hopefully the end of the year. Hopefully we'll get through it all um, as the new movie, the sequel starts pumping up. So we'll get into all that, you know, in the near future because I want to go in order as best as I can. And then, yeah, so Andy, she got her coffee. She's coming back to her record shop. I guess she has a job here. Uh, there's Maximilian dude, <laughs> kind of, like a version of him, uh, looks like. And uh, then he, I guess he goes to the bathroom to, you know, or goes to the back room for something or goes to the bathroom. I don't know. They say he's taking a crap, um, but I don't I don't know. I don't have the – there's no dialogue here, so I don't know what he's doing. But then out of the coffee, uh, a symbiote emerges, and then uh, I guess it kills that guy. Um, and as he's coming out of the back room with his coffee – yeah, so I don't know if he went to the bathroom to take a dump. Like, why is he? <laughs> why? Why did he bring his coffee with him? I don't know. Whatever. Uh, I'm sure the dialogue will explain what, where he went. He probably just went in the back room to just check the schedule or something. Um, but yeah. So anyway, Andy watches him get brutally murdered, and that's pretty much it. So yeah, that's the that's the preview pages of these. I'll put a link down below to Bleeding Cool so you can check out uh, these pages yourself in better quality and without them being cropped off. Because obviously, when I'm scrolling here, uh, I can't get the whole pages in here. Um, you know, I, I guess I could set change my zoom settings, but uh, then there will be a lot of negative space around them. I'm not really a fan of that look. Um, anyway, so yeah, that's just my thoughts. I wanted to share this with you. I don't. I know I don't cover a lot of the the comic book news that much anymore. Um, I'm and I'm waiting for movie news to come out, and I'm trying to cover old comics still so i'm kind of in between things so i figured when i saw this headline i was like yeah i have something to say about this and this was a good way for me to give out those digital codes from lonely symbiote uh, at the same time and those books will prepare you for absolute carnage and i feel like this will too and so i wanted just to talk a little bit about, more about absolute carnage um i've kind of gone back on my word I, I think i originally said that uh i will probably not buy the carnage books the absolute carnage books or all the tie-ins but uh, i've decided to um you know, to make an effort, you know, uh, I will at least give them each a chance. Like if I can't get past issue one, then yeah, I'll probably drop those tie-ins or whatever. But Absolute Carnage is only four issues. I feel like, eh, that's not a big commitment. I can probably, I'll just buy them and at least review them to you guys. But, you know, just be a heads up, you know, I'm going to be honest. And I know a lot of people are don't like that I don't like the Donny Kate stuff, and that's fine. They, you know, they'll downvote my videos where I'm like talking, you know, pointing out things I don't like about Donny Kate stuff. But again, these are just my opinions. Like, if, if it bothers you that much, you know, that you have to hit the downvote button, that's fine. I, I get it. Um, you know, we don't always have to agree on everything, but at least let me know in the comments also why you don't agree with me because I like having the conversation. So if you are out there and you are disliking my videos, I, I invite you to also comment um, so that way we can just have a dialogue about it because I like hearing what people do like about it because it gives me information for my videos and I can say like, hey, well, so-and-so likes it for this reason and, you know, and, and it helps me connect you guys more to this show because, you know, this show is about us. We are Venom. I know I, I host this show, but I, and I, but I talk directly to you guys and I want you guys to talk directly back to me um, at the same time because that it just helps us all grow as people and all become one with our symbiote. I guess, <laughs> to be cheesy about it. But anyway, so yeah, this information, I thought, I don't know, I wanted to share it with you. And I appreciate Bleeding Cool and, and their efforts. Uh, you know, I, again, I know I don't go to this website that much anymore, but every once in a while I'll see one of their articles pop up in my um, recommended on my, you know, Google search. And I'll, I'll click on it just to see what it is. And when I saw this was Venom related, I was like, hey, you know what? Two birds and one stone. I can give out those digital codes from Lonely Symbiote. Uh, so big thank you to Lonely Symbiote. And then I can give my thoughts on this and also correct the fact that this is not actually the first death uh, leading up to, you know, to leading up to absolute carnage. Um, at least if you're counting the web Venom books. The, free, the real first death will be in, uh, was Lee Price because that's technically an absolute carnage precursor. Um, you know, it's like a number zero issue, if you will. So I don't know. Those are just my thoughts. If you agree or not, let me know down below and we'll continue our conversation down there thanks so much for watching the show as always like share subscribe all that fun stuff and i'll see you in the future peace